Well, if you've come back to these videos and come back to listen to me talking, uh, well, thank you, and I hope that I can help you. But there's, again, just one thing that I want to point out is that I'm going to try to explain things to the best of my knowledge. But remember that I'm also a student, and this is the best of my knowledge. It may not be what the professor wants, but it's the best of... Uh, my knowledge so i'm gonna try to be try to strip it down to basics and uh focus on more of a specific topic and try to get that done and hopefully it'll this will kind of help you and maybe it'll jog your memory because that's the point of these videos that's more like radio than it is sort of uh I don't know what would you say. It's more like radio than it is a video. So, I'm. Um, that's just what I wanted to say. But I'll. What we're going. What I'm going to go over in this video is. Uh, we're going to look at cranial nerves. What did I just say? Cranial nerves, because that is the most important thing that I feel for chapter 15. So. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna try again, like everything else I've created. I'm gonna try to strip it down to basics, and we'll go through all twelve and just figure out what they do, why they do, what they, what they do. That's it. Just we'll, we'll just go with the what they do. So if you're wondering anyway why they're labeled one through twelve, it's just working anterior to posterior, and then I guess whichever one they found, they gave it the next number. So. One, two, three, four, five, six. You get the, you get the idea, I guess. And so that's how they got the numbers. They're just working anterior to posterior. So, I guess, uh, no more messing around. I guess no more, no more crap. So, let's look at cranial nerves. And I'll also, because I'm actually looking at a lecture book. I'm looking at. Table 14.4 on chapter, on page 518. That is a great, this is actually a great table because it actually jogs your memory really well, but I'll also give you page numbers for each cranial nerve. And they're nice, neat little paragraphs. And if you can, if you know how to skim read, they'll really help you. So let's start. Uh, so I guess we'll look at Roman numeral one, which is olfactory. And if you know what olfactory means, it means smelling, you know, like when you roll the garbage out, your garbage smells bad. When you just cook something really nice, it smells good for those of you who like to cook. And remember, you can have either special just sensory, you can have only motor, or you can have something that has sensory aspects and motor aspects. Well... Uh, Roman numeral one or the first one is olfactory, which means it only does sensory. So basically, it just well smells, and the olfactory olfactory foramina and the reform plate in the ethmoid bone. If you joined us in our uh, study groups b before class and after class when we sort of turned a skull inside out and looked over everything at what they're protecting you probably know where the curb reform plate is not going further into that but basically their job is to smell they're only sensory they don't have any motor aspect they go through the olfactory foramina the olfactory bulb and then there's the olfactory tract and if you are not getting the idea, you can look on page 507 of your lecture book and just sort of, if you, after you read like the first three sentences, you got the idea and then the diagram. So yeah, that's what the olfactory cranial nerve does. So then let's move on to number two, optic. Number two is optic. And that is also just sensory. And what it does is vision and Again, rods and cones are inside the optic nerve. And actually, a cool thing about the nerve that I thought I'd bring up is it's actually part of your brain. It's not, 
it's sort of considered a nerve. It's sort of considered just continuation of your brain into your eyes with the and having the rods and cones sort of like an autofocus in a camera. Depending on the amount of light there is, the rods and cones calibrate so that you have the best vision possible unless you have some sort of visual problem. So that's on page 508. There's a neat little paragraph on the optic nerve. It's not all fancy and wonderful, but it's just, you know, your optic cranial nerve. So that's that. So now there's a whole paragraph dedicated to three, four, and six. And I know I'm bad at math, but I know how to count to six. One, two, three, four, five, six. But we're going to skip five for now. So three is your oculomotor, motor, four is your trochlear, and six is your abducens. And the reason that I skip five is it's not in the same family as three, four, and six. So let me explain what I mean. So oculomotor motor is number three. That's completely motor, it only motor. There's no sensory aspect to ocular motor. And if you remember ocularis, orbital ocularis that surrounds your eye. It moves your uh, eyeball and upper eyelid. It adjusts uh, your the lens of your eye for better vision and the constriction or dilation of your pupil. That is basically what your ocular motor is. And if you want sort of a very short look, look at table 14.4. So that is three. So then your trochlear. When I said they're in the same family, trochlear is completely motor too. It's just movement of your eyeball. Up, down, left, right, diagonal-ish. I don't know if that's a word, but diagonal is, um, yeah, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. Just move it all around so that you can see stuff. But the reason I'm skipping number five is it doesn't fall into that category of moving your eye. But your abducens, which is number six, does. That Your abducens is also completely motor and it moves your eyeball, but it only abducts your eyeball. So which means it moves it laterally. So basically, if you look at the corner of your eye, that's your abducens nerve. So all three of those three four and six are completely motor so that you'll see that on page 509 they're all bunched together into one longer paragraph so if you want to look further into that uh well you can do that so then like i said i'm getting kind of ahead of myself so let's sort of rewind a little and go back to page 509 11, which is where number 5 starts, uh, nerve 5 starts, and that's mixed, which means uh, there are sensory and motor, uh, brand, motor parts to this. So what I mean, the trigeminal uh, nerve sort of goes to your uh, uh, mandible, your maxilla, and your eye. Did I say I? Oh, oh man, I'm making this video and then I, I'm forgetting where the hell it went. Do 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 do. Think of the Jeopardy theme right now. Ophthalmic branch. Yeah. So trigeminal. So tri tricycle. Tri. So three. So as it branches off, it has three uh, branches from the main branch. You you probably get the idea. It will go to your ophthalmic branch, your maxillary branch, and your mandibular branch. Remember, your ophthalmic branch is your thinnest one off the three. And basically, it'll, well, do what it says it'll do. And basically, I've said basically a lot, haven't I? Well, it's a mixed nerve. So the sensory, the sensory part of the nerve is uh, touch, pain and thermal so if like you touch the hot touch the i don't know 
You know, I, don't, I really don't know how thermal would apply to this, but it does. Hot, cold, like put an ice pack after he got hit in the eye with a quick jab or something. So that's the thermal, I guess, cold on your eye or like sweat. You would feel the sweat. If you got hit in the face, you would feel the pain. That's your trigeminal. So that's the sensory input. So what is the motor part of the trigeminal nerve? So it's like the ch chewing. So if you're chewing gum, that's your trigeminal nerve. And it also controls your middle ear muscle. So kind of like, uh, that's all I'll say about that. And if you want to look at your trigeminal nerve, which is a very tricky one, I'll be honest, it's a, it's a very odd one. That's on page 511 in your lecture book. Take a peek at that. It's kind of, I'll be honest, that's a little complicated. So, again, we're going to skip six because I already said six, remember? Uh, four, three, four, and six are the same family of moving your eyes around. And then we went back to five. Now let's go to seven. That's another mixed one. So there are sensory and motor frank, motor uh, uh, functions to this concept. So seven is your facial nerve, which allows you to sort of uh, make facial expressions, maybe a uh, facial expression of frustration, surprise, irritation with all the chaos that's been going on at school and class and all that. I don't know. Whatever you make facial expressions for. I know I've been making facial expressions for confusion. So sensory is definitely taste. So if you like to cook, to make sure you put the right amount of salt or the right amount of pepper, or the or I don't know, whatever the hell you eat. Uh, taste. And that's your anterior two-thirds of your tongue. Uh, touch, pain, and thermal, like I said. All of that, all of that great stuff. Uh, motor, uh, like I said, facial expressions and the middle ear muscle, and uh, through your from your lacrimal bones and uh, well, your mouth. Uh, uh, lacrimal bones, you'll get tears and saliva in your mouth. That's aut that's from the autonomic nervous system, which we will be going over in fifth, chapter fifteen. And your bran bran branchial nervous system is, that's the control of muscles of facial expression, which is more voluntary. So that's that. And if you want to look, if that's not enough, if that's not, that's stripped to basics. If you want to look at it in more detail and actually make more sense with anatomical terms, that's on page 512. And vestibulocochlear nerve. That's completely sensory. So all that is is split that word in half. Vestibulo refers to vestibular system. So that's equilibrium, balance. And cochlear nerve is hearing. That's cochlear is just fancy for audio, hearing. How well can you hear? So that's all it does. That's why it's only special sensory. So number, what are we on? Nine? Yeah, I said Number eight was vestibular cochlear, seven was facial, so glossopharyngeal is nine. Now if you remember, glosso means tongue, and pharyngeal means your pharynx, and that's a mixed nerve, which means sensory and motor functions. So the sensory is taste, posterior one-third, that would be your glossopharyngeal tongue. Part of your tongue, that would be the nerve that's tasting stuff, that wouldn't be your facial nerve. You could have paused it like about 20 seconds ago and try to figure that out. You'll, you'll figure it out when you hear this actually. And proprioception of swallowing mu muscles. So this is one of the nerves out of three that helps in swallowing. Uh, blood pressure monitorization. Mo monitor, monitor, oh my God, I cannot talk today. Monitoring blood pressure. Uh, the amount of oxygen and the carbon dioxide level in the blood near the cranium. And again, touch, pain, and thermal sensation from the skin in the external ear. 
So if you're embarrassed about something and sort of humiliated and you your ears are going hot, that's the nerve that's going to sense that you're blushing and your ears are going red. Eh, as I do in most social situations. Yes, yes I do. And so that same nerve, glossopharyngeal. Again, split that word in half. Glosso is the tongue. Pharyngeal is your pharynx. The motor points, uh, assistant swallowing, that, that's from your bra uh, branchial region. That's one of the motor functions. And another motor function from the that's autonomic is the secretion of saliva. So those are the motor function, sensory, of course, I just said that. So rewind, uh, please rewind because uh, for some reason I cannot talk. Uh, let's move on to number 10. So t number, the cranial nerve 10 is a funny one because it's one of, it's the only one that goes further than your head. What I mean is it goes all the way into your uh, GI system. So that's your vagus nerve at number uh, number 10. And so, by the way, uh, if you want to look at uh, the glossopharyngeal, that's on page one, 514, and then 515 is now the vagus nerve. Sorry, forgot to forgot to tell you that. So that's another mixed nerve. I know mixed nerves are sort of annoying to remember the sensory parts and the motor parts and to split them up, but we have to do it. So that's our job. So the sensory part, taste from the epiglottis. So the epiglottis is to make sure food doesn't, it's a little flap that, if you don't know what the epiglottis is, it is just a little flap that covers your trachea every time you swallow food so that it doesn't go down your trachea and you don't will die so I know that's a little morbid but that's that's what it does and that's why people choke because sometimes they swallow and the epiglottis didn't close in time and the food went down the trachea and they're choking and the Heimlich maneuver so that's that's all choking is really so taste from the epiglottis uh, proprioception so that's why sometimes when you eat cough syrup or something it tastes really bad you can taste it all the way like at the back of your throat like cough syrup yeah that's why that's your vagus nerve uh proprioception from throat and voice box muscles like my voice box got messed up when i got actually a, va a vagal nerve stimulator put in my chest to control some uh i have epilepsy so it controls my seizures so yeah it does that so i have actually a little stimulator that controls uh puts uh, periodical electrical stimulation into my brain to try to control my seizures but it also messes it's also messing with my voice box which is why my voice changes awkwardly on this microphone and you've always wondered why is that so there's a little thing about me and so and then other sensory factors, uh, again, blood pressure and oxygen, carbon dioxide, uh, monitoring, touch pain and thermal sensation from skin of external ear. Again, if you're blushing and your ears go red and hot, that's what it's going to sense. So you got to back up there, your vagus nerve. Uh, sensations from thoracic and abdominal organs. Like I said, it's the only nerve out of the 12 that goes all the way down into your abdomen. And so, like, if you have, that's why you have heartburn. So, say, like, there's too much acidic buildup. That's what gives you heartburn. Like, the acidic buildup, of course, goes up your, has to build up in your stomach, the acid levels, and then go through the little sphincter, and then up your uh, esophagus, and all that great stuff. But your vagus nerve senses that. So... Heartburn isn't fun. Uh, the motor parts, again, this is the vagus nerve is another one that helps in swallowing, vocalization, and coughing. So if you're like coughing right now, uh, run away. Uh, and, uh, that's, that's voluntary. So when you see the word bran bronchial on the uh, table 14.4, 
uh, that probably that's most of the time voluntary. That's what it basically means. You're in control of that. Autonomic means you have no control of that. And autonomically, it's the mobility and secretion of gastrointestinal organs, which means, uh, how do I put this? Uh, different sort of acids and alkaline ma chemicals in your gastrointestinal organs are secreted due to the vagus nerve. That's the best that I understand it. And that's how your food is also pushed, pushed down. So that's your uh, digestion. So that's how your vagus nerve helps. Autonomically, your uh, uh, constriction of respiratory passageways and also it decreases your heart rate. So after, like, say, you ran a mile, your heart rate's at 140 beats per minute. Uh, It'll vagus nerve's job is to decrease that back to resting heart rate of I don't know, seventy five beats per minute. That's still a little high, but let's just call it that seventy five. So that was number ten. So we only have two more to go. So almost there. Accessory. That's number eleven. That's completely motor. So only it only has a motor function and it's uh. Branchial, branchial. I don't know. I still don't know how to say that. Branchial, branchial, branchial. Something. I need one of you guys to tell me how to say that. Branchial. I'm gonna say that. Branchial. And basically, that's the movement of the head and pectoral girdle. So if you wanna, I don't know, look down, look to the left, uh, like sort of, look up, look down. That kind of stuff. It works sort of your. Uh, pectoral girdle and that it activates your trapezius to start action potentials there and work that and basically to move your head that's what the accessory nerves it's to start the action potential to somatic uh somatic uh motor impulse so action potentials so that your somatic motor uh motor Shoot. I think you know what I'm trying to get at. I just blanked out for a minute. Sorry. But, uh, yeah. That's what it does. It just helps you move your head. Yeah. And, uh, that was number 11. So, accessory, not a big, not a big deal. So, and again, I forgot to tell you. Your vagus nerve is on page 515. And your accessory is on page 516. And then the last one, number 12. And that's hypoglossal. Hypo, under, glossal, tongue. Break it apart. That's the, that's the best way to understand these anatomical terms most of the time. Just break them in half and then break them maybe in thirds if they're very long. So it's completely motor, your hypoglossal. Even though, it, even though you might think the opposite. It's completely motor. And basically, it's helping... Take me for an example of what I'm doing right now. It helps me in speech. Manipulation of food. So when I'm chewing stuff, if I don't want to swallow it yet, like if I haven't chewed it all the way, uh, it helps me keep food from going down my esophagus and also helps me still keep it so I can chew it and then swallow it. And then it helps in the process of swallowing. So... It's a, that's the third nerve that helps in the process of swallowing. So the hypoglossal, the vagus nerve, and the glossopharyngeal nerve are the three nerves that help in swallowing. So that's, uh, that's that. And that's going through all three of these. Now I know I went, to, went through these fast and I'm looking at my computer and more than likely I've been talking for 20 minutes yeah I know I've been talking for more than 20 minutes but uh, that wasn't uh, the intention here but uh, I had to I thought maybe 
I should hammer out one video of at least the cranial nerves because when chapter 15 if it's on different nervous systems like somatic motor system uh, autonomic motor system parasympathetic sympathetic you have to know which nerves are getting hit with what sort of nervous system so that we know what's being affected so i thought if i let's just strip a ton of basics and try to move 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 let me tell you where everything is like if you want to read about your accessory nervous system page 516 hypoglossal page 517 a brilliant chart actually to help jog your memory if you've actually gotten really good at this page 518 for table 14.4 is a very good summary of your cranial nerves uh i think i've said that before uh so it tells you if they're uh, motor sensory what they do in like a sentence here i told you in a you know i don't know big phd thesis but same thing and if you're actually still listening to me now i'm impressed and thank you but uh yeah and i hope you've come up with a good uh sort of a I hope you've been thinking about a good uh, mnemonic because I'm not a fan of the mnemonic that they give in the book honestly so I've been trying to invent one I've got no luck so if you've spotted any patterns or something please post them so uh, if you, again if you stuck with me this long appreciate it and uh, I hope I was able to strip it on a basics and quickly run through quickly being relative quickly run through all 12 of these nerves jog your memory a little bit tell you where to find if you think oh I need to look at that a little more tell you which pages to go to in your lecture book to read the little paragraph about the nerve because they don't write like two pages worth of information with like a hundred bolded sub subjects in them they're neat little paragraphs about each one then they move on because it's very self-explanatory again so I think I should stop talking now because I made my point very clear but I think the nerves are the most important thing to start with because even for the finals we can come back and look at this if you want and I hope to make other radio like emphasis uh videos i guess like this on other parts if you're struggling with other parts let me know which ones which parts and then maybe i can do something about it if not then uh yeah there's nothing really i can do besides try to help yeah but i'll stop i'll stop talking now and Here's a picture of a cute little dog if you've stuck with me this whole time so that you kind of leave here with the overview and kind of happy because dogs make people happy. Anyway, thanks for listening and I'll see you later.